Hey, what's good, y'all? So I decided to come on tonight um, because I want to talk about a little thing that um, I was hit with uh, the other day. And this has to do with the concept of arrogance and conceit. So before I get into that, I just want to say that for those of you kind of know and and follow me and listen to my music you pretty much know my story and that I spent 15 years in prison and in that time I never learned or grew so fast so spiritually and so culturally and emotionally when I came there I was a broken person I was broken, um, heartbroken, but one thing that never happened, no one ever killed or claimed my soul. And so many people who were there for less time than me or less severe crimes than me allowed that place to kill their soul. And what I found and the women who gave up. Because you can still function and walk and talk, eat and drink and hang out and give up on life. Let's be clear. Not everybody who gives up on life um, dies by suicide. Some people, more often than not, more people walk around hollow or with their soul claimed or killed than actually commit an act against themselves to end their life. And the people that gave up were the people, first of all, everybody who comes through the penal system is is broken down and beat up. Um, The process is a soul killing process um, to go and be booked through jail. And a lot of people, except the people that really know or been down with somebody that's in jail, know what that's like. But for most people, they consider people in jail bad people. So who cares how they're treated or the uh, the things that they endure in there? But that's a whole nother conversation. I digress. So many people who gave up, many women who allow the system to kill their souls. They gave the system the name. And what they did was give up on themselves. And it was the first book I ever wrote, read when I got to prison was called Victor Frankl's Man Search for Meaning. And Victor Frankl was a psychologist. He was a psychologist that went, that was in the concentration camps. Um, during World War II, and he found that the people, even if they were exterminated, even if they were killed, who had hope for their future, were the ones who didn't allow their soul to be killed. And he ended up surviving and made out, and he did an analysis, you know, as a doctor, even though they put doctors and other people on, in those, you know, prominent people, these were not just poor nobodies. And um, I don't give a damn w- about no that whole conversation. Wrong is wrong and right is right, no matter who's doing it or who's it being done to. But the people who gave up were the people who had no more hope for their future. And I'm thankful that that was the first book I read when I got there. And I said, I'm not going to be one of those people who give up on the future. Something has to come out of this. I don't know what. This is the most horrible thing I've ever been through. But something's got to come out of this. Otherwise, everything else, the pain is in vain. So as I'm going through my journey and I'm walking on this path, I'm basically walking in place. It's prison. I can't go nowhere. I can't escape. So the only place to go is in. 
No pun intended. The only place left to go is within. And so I escaped through books. And I learned about the path, the path, the journey that we're all on. And it's a great metaphor for life. I started on a path. And on that path, I met people along the way. Some people were further along than on the path than me. Some people were on the side. They had rested and found it was comfortable to settle right there. And that's okay. I kept walking. I kept learning. I kept growing. I kept trying to figure out how could I use this horrible experience I've been through for me to be better. And I learned that when I walked around the prison with my head down and sad and defeated and ashamed, no one bothered me. No one said anything bad. If they did, they didn't say it to me. But the minute I started to raise my head up, And say, you know what? I'm somebody, damn it. Yeah, I did something horrible, bad to get in here. But that does not make me bad. And I started to look within. And I started to believe. And I started to feel myself, forgive myself. I started to rise up. I started to love myself. For the first time in my life. When the evidence. When everything around me. When where I was. And what I had done. Said the opposite. How did I do that? How did that happen? Hope. That's why I like the, the, the Greek mythology story of Pandora's box. Pandora's box is a box that I fit, a Greek princess had to, I forget her name. But anyway, it was this box that contained all the world's sorrows. And there was somebody in charge of keeping the box closed. But one day they opened it. And all the world's sorrows went all over the world. There was death, everything that could bring a human being sorrow and circumstances and situations. And it seemed, it seemed nothing was ever going to make it better. Nothing was ever going to fix it. But at the bottom of that box was one thing, the strongest thing. Even the architect in the Matrix said, is like, It is the source of our greatest strength and our greatest weakness. And the last thing at the bottom of Pandora's box was hope. We all have our own Pandora's box inside us. We're capable of such horrible things. Horrible nightmares. But I believe if you have a soul... That is the last thing at the bottom of the box. Hope. And some people, when they open their Pandora's box, they never bothered or checked for the hope. Or they closed it and left it right there. So when hope came out of my box, and I started to lift my head a bit and walk with my head a little higher and bounce around a little bit more in my step. That's when I started to hear that word, arrogant. Who does she think she is to think something about her? I have less time than her. I didn't do what she did to get in there. How dare she think she's Loved. 
Trust me. That thing at the bottom of the box, of my box, that hope, is independent of us. Because if we were just relying on our circumstances to have hope, we wouldn't have it. Especially when there's more sorrows than this so-called little hope at the bottom. But that's all you need. So with that hope, I began to walk. And no matter how dark my situation looked, I remember that book. I remember Victor Franco, the ones who died before they died, allow somebody to kill their hope. Otherwise, what are we doing? If you're just getting up and going to work every day, Paying your bills, raising kids, worrying about things. Open that box back up. Don't be afraid to be called arrogant for opening your box. Pause. And letting your hope out. So... When you're walking a path, you'll have those tools. You'll have, you'll meet people right at the right time. There'll be blessings along the way and signs that you're on the right path when you're on your path. You'll start to hear that arrogance, though, when you start to create your own path. Who do you think you are? Nobody ever walked that way. There's no path over there. You can't make your own path. And that's other people's projections of their fears because they never thought or had the audacity of hope to create their own path. Never look to people or hold too much weight who have not done anything ordinary, extraordinary in their own lives. They won't see shit in yours. They won't, because they haven't seen it in themselves. So they'll call you arrogant. They'll call you vain and conceited and selfish. Because you're trying to do something nobody, probably in your family, has ever done before. And you know who my heroes are? My heroes are the people who did something nobody had ever done before. You can't do what everybody else is doing and still end up doing what nobody else has ever done. So they'll call you arrogant. They'll call you selfish. They'll call you conceited. All kind of things on the path to making and creating your own path. People won't understand. They'll laugh. They'll call you crazy. They'll be rooting for you to fail. Because they have. And if you make it, that sheds light on their own shortcomings, not yours. So though, to those who are, who dare walk the path to their own self-improvement, to their own highest self, They'll call you a lot of things. But eventually, those voices will fade in the distance. And all you have to do, even if it's arrogance that you gas your tank with, just keep walking. Peace.